Hey guys, I'm John on occasion, and today we're playing our first Immortal Empires campaign. I know, I'm excited too. Uh, so we're going to play Cult Friends. That's right, we're going right back to the beginning. You'll notice the new UI, or the new eye, as it's uh, as it's known by me, predominantly. Uh, here, Ludicrous Manifactions. How cool does that look? So I'm very excited about this. Uh, we play as Carl Franz, like I said. Faction effects, plus 10 diplomacy with the Empire, plus 2 recruit rank, plus 10% campaign movement range for all armies, and he gets minus 25% uh, reduction for upkeep for Reichsguard and Greatswords, and plus 8 leadership for his whole army. He starts where you'd expect him, at the capital of the Empire, in the Reichland, Altdorf. And also there's some fluff, which I can't be bothered to read, but that's fine. So, settings. This is where things get incredibly interesting with Immortal Empires. This is the stuff that makes it feel uh, very different to the other campaigns that exist already. Because, you know, this campaign has already existed. But now it's in a different place, with some new toys. And these are the new toys. So, sea lanes. Uh, that's, yeah, just irrelevant to us, honestly. It's how you get from one side of the map to the other, because it's not a globe. But, fine. Endgame scenarios, though, are awesome. So, endgame scenarios, we're going to make them a little bit more difficult. That's right, we're going to put it up to 150. Uh, 10 turn warming sounds good to me. Uh, trigger on long victory is irrelevant because we're not going to do... We're not going to pursue any victory, honestly. This campaign, we are just going to be uniting the Empire and dealing with whatever um, nonsense gets thrown at us. Uh, I'm going to have... Yeah, choice of three. So, one of these. Right, one event... Right, one end game scenario will play out out of all the ones that are ticked. This just puts them in the in the hat. Okay, it puts their name in the hat and the game will pick one of these out of the hat. So you can tailor make it, you can pick exactly which one you want if you just have the one ticked, or you can turn them all off and just, you know, play a normal campaign. But we're also going to change the time at which they appear. That's right, between 50 and 100 turns is the range at which we're going to uh, have and it's going to be scary. So, between turn 50 and 100, we're either going to have a De Biggest Wa show up. From the Badlands, it means we're going to do the Battle of Blackfire Pass, but, you know, <laughs> thousands of times until they're dealt with. The Wild Hunt means that uh, the Elves of Athel Lauren are at it again. Cheeky little sod, so we'll need to be careful about that. And Vampiric Ascension, so the Vampire Wars could kick off for a second time. Pretty cool stuff. We play on hard and hard uh, because the end game difficulty is made more difficult, and any higher than hard difficulty, I find the game just devolves into um, a meaningless soup of elite stacks. It 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 ruins the immersion for me. It destroys the world building, and honestly, I find it more tedious than difficult. And I don't want this to be tedious. I want to be able to role play. I want to be able to use state troops and and <laughs> war wagons. We might even use a war wagon. You don't get that on higher difficulties. You wouldn't dare. So. We're going to have some fun. We're going to make our own difficulty by uh, by sticking our nose where it doesn't belong. So it should be fun. Let's go. Now is the time, men of the Empire, to unite. And that's that then. No big intro. Also, Mortal Empires is still in beta. And I haven't... Uh, like, you know, the game's not actually out yet at all. You guys can't play it. I have early access to this, so it's not even out in beta yet. It's it's the beta of the beta. You could say the alpha, but it's not, because this is probably what you guys are going to end up with when it does launch, but whatever. It's early access to the beta. Right whatever that might be called. Crown. So, Helmut's Ludenhoff, we're going to come for you first. All right. So, we have our right guard. Love right guard. They look great. Love them. Love them. We also have a couple units of swordsmen. We have some great swords. We have some halberdiers. We have two units of hand gunners. And uh, we have some mortars. And of course, Calfrant. So you might notice that's a little bit different to the old campaign. That's right. All of the starting armies have been sort of tinkered with, have been retooled for Immortal Empires. And one big impact of that is a lot of it was uh, apparently took into account the auto-resolve of all of the factions, all of the different starting armies, to make sure that you didn't end up with certain factions snowballing. So they should all be a lot more evenly matched, a lot more evenly distributed, and there shouldn't be certain factions that, that just snowball because they happen to have, you know, really favourable auto-resolves. 
Uh, so I think it's really good. I think it's really nice they've sort of balanced that out a bit. So, more to fire. Let's start with the crossbowmen, I think. Because if they're going to stand still, they're not going to be shooting. So, sort of perfect, really. Also, we're not going to blow up all our own guys by accident if we're for the crossbow. Yeah, we won't be shooting into the front lines with the mortars. Alright, come on, lads. Come on, baddies. What are you playing at? Oh. Yeah, it's alright hits. I mean, we didn't hit the folks we were trying to, but that's fine. Let's be on guard mode. And you know what? Let's start charging out. Screw it. Come here, you. And I'm just going to shimmy the halberdiers so we can keep shooting these spearmen. And I'm surprised we haven't got... Oh, there we go. So I'm surprised we haven't got some good hits on the crossbowmen yet. Okay, some great shots there. Now let's use the Reichland Rune Fang. So Carl Franz can put up his uh, his melee attack and melee attack of folks nearby. And now the Reichsguard are going to charge. Now I can see why these bowmen are so cross. Alright, start shooting the front line. Blowing up your own cavalry is fun and everything, but I don't think it's particularly useful. Alright, let's move you around this way so you can start getting a flank. They'll be dealt with soon. And Carl has almost killed uh, uh, Mr. Ludenhoff here. What's his name again? Helmut. Helmut Ludenhoff. And, okay. Backspace to uh, cancel orders, by the way. How did you get so tangled up in there? It's very weird. And that was a weird charge. No, they're doing okay. Yeah, they're all going to break in a second. Good. Good stuff. Did a good job, guys. Did a good job. Decisive victory. Alright, good stuff. So Helmut Ludenhoff has been dealt with. We are going to... Uh, well, that's 46, which is not many. I think I'm going to go for pardoning the captives. I'm going to get a bit of cash out of them. And also, I think it's a good uh, thing for Carl Franz to be doing. These are still his citizens. They may have rebelled, but no, we're going to show them that we are going to uh, bludgeon them to death with hammers. But those that survive, you know, they can just pay a fine and go back to tending the farms that the Empire needs to uh, to keep it strong. So, pardon the captives. I am Prince and, Emperor. and we just got a hunter for extra ambush success chance. That might be useful from time to time. It takes skill to stalk wild animals while avoiding the dark creatures of the woods. Sure does. Alright. Hang on. Backspace to cancel. Very handy. Uh, let's give him... I don't think we'll need Root Marcher for a couple of turns at least. Uh, for a couple more battles, just because of how how the, the different um, settlements are spaced out. So I'll go with Inspiring Presence first. Okay, so medium casualties. I've decided I can't afford that. Let's fight it. Okay, so for anyone who's watched any of my Warhammer 3 campaigns already, you'll know that I like to fight where I land. So we've landed at this part of the settlement, so we will attack this part of the settlement. That way, we won't just pick a favourite entrance and fight that the exact same way every single time we encounter this map. No, we'll let the map decide which way we're going to fight it, so the map should have a bit more longevity, you know? It should feel fresher for longer. Every battle will be a little bit different. Different things to overcome. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, have the mortar firing into the town square. And my elite troops are going to push that way. Um, I'm going to get my hand gunners here, though. I think they have a better chance of shooting things around here. And then we'll have a swordsman pile in. And I'll see. I'll see about the right guard. They're quick. They can go in wherever, you know? I was going to tell them to run in, because I, I, I think these guys are just going to keep moving. So the same for those crossbowmen. Uh, this might be a bit of a problem, actually. Both towers have been built here. I could waste their time and just run off the other way. But I also could shoot these towers, which would be quite nice. 
stuff, cool. It certainly gave some good damage into these guys. And over here. Alright, Halberds. You go over there. Yeah, you keep moving. These guys have taken so much damage on the towers already. It's a little bit ridiculous. Alright, you guys pile in. And we'll start shooting the towers. And the Reichsguard might be able to get in through here. It's really hard to say. Yeah, it's tough to know. We'll see if they can squeeze in. Alright, that's going to take a while to take down, but we'll get it eventually. Yeah, we'll get through it eventually. Okay, come on. Single file. Single file, guys. Also, let's bolster everyone's melee attack. Still hitting these guys. Alright, I'm going to have to start shooting these spearmen. Am I going to be able to hit from here? I really have no idea. And you need to push through. Come on. Also, these towers will be dealt with the moment we take this square, which we might take quite quickly. Although these guys are coming in as well. So, hard to say. Oh, that's not quite gone. There we go. Okay, let's squeeze these guys through. Okay, single file, guys. Uh, mortars so far have killed nothing. You're just hitting the top, aren't you? That's what's happening. Oh, well, okay. No, maybe they are getting the odd hit. Okay, we'll get through them. Eventually. Come on, keep pushing through. I want you to shoot them in the back. Because that's honourable. That's how honourable people do it. Uh, okay, six kills for the mortars now. Yeah, I'm hitting the roof a lot. And my own guys a lot. Yeah, not great positioning. Not great positioning there. It's okay, we'll make it work. You're a little bit caught up on there, but that's alright too. Nice charge of these guys. I mean, great swords got no problems. Very good hits of the mortars all of a sudden. Okay, that's perfect. They should all break in two seconds flat. You guys are getting some brilliant shots into the back of these guys. Although you've got a bit of a... Um, whatever you call this. Little burial box. <laughs> so, someone help me in the comments. What the hell are these things called? Anyway. It's not a tomb. It's too small to be a tomb. I'm just very used to grandiose language playing Warhammer. Everything's a, a tomb or a a big tomb. Alright. Crushing it. So we're going to occupy it. Obviously. You know, it's our house. I was going to leave it. So now, Emperor Karl Franz. Let's get him the Emperor's Finest. Only the finest for our Emperor. So that will bolster the uh, the melee defense of our front line a little bit. So Swordsman, we're probably not going to have a lot of them in the late game. But I, I do want to have a core of Halberdiers in our army later on. And they do benefit from that skill. Free company militia do not, but I think they're a really nice addition. They're really fun to play with. Uh, the fact that they shoot on the move, the fact that they can shoot and do melee, they're just a really interesting unit. Nice, like, well, sort of hybrid unit that gives you a lot of versatility early on. And I think thematically, it fits to go, okay, we need to get everything back in order. Hire mercenaries, do whatever it takes. We need to get, we need to muster men quickly and then, and then take back um, our land. So I think it's a good. It's a good fit. It's a good fit. Alright, so... 
Technology. I want to get tithe rebates first off, because I want that extra growth and control. That will help keep things in order. And also, growth is going to be incredibly useful, because there's going to be some catastrophic event happening, you know, sometime between turn 50 and 100. I want to make sure that we are as, you know, built as tooled as possible, so we can have all the best walls and defenses and income and access to the best units. We need to go quickly with, uh, with regards to that stuff. So, we also want to go to Diplomacy. Yes. Let's have a look at yes. trade deals. Uh, first off, I'm going to try and win over... Actually, do you think I could win over Koaza Karak? They want two grand. I would like to start building up a rapport with Thorgrim, though. So, this is a bit of a uh, expensive uh, get, like early gambit. But I'm going to go with it. I want to make sure that Thorgrim is on board. He is our oldest ally. And the campaign doesn't really give you, you know, the tools to be an ally of him early on. So I think it always feels a bit weird. Uh, and also, oh, 26. I can obviously do that. That's fine. But getting a trade deal from Kislev is one of the big, big new changes to this campaign. And you're probably not going to want to trade either, are you? Although, you will accept it. <laughs> one. I'll just give you one crown, or one Carl, named after yes. me. I'm on the money. Okay, of good. Course. So three trade deals, really yes, nice to have. But. And let's also Bigger get a deal with Sterling. Yes. And we can make a bit of money out of these deals. Come then. I will. That's good news. Yes. Okay. What? And Talabagland are thinking about... Okay, for Only 33 quid I'll do it. it. We'll get some more deals next turn, certainly. Because they will reassess us as a faction now that we have twice as much territory. So that should help. Also, there's all things of uh, fealty and imperial authority that we'll have to worry about. And prestige, there's a whole load of stuff that we will be um, getting into as it becomes relevant. Don't you worry. But we really do get to play as the Emperor in this campaign. It's absolutely wonderful. I absolutely adore the mechanics surrounding this campaign. Also, uh, in terms of new things, Skarsnik does not start nearby anymore. So, Karakaz Garaz is empty. I don't think Skaven lived there. But I can't be certain. I've never checked. But maybe. Uh, and then over here, just in this spot, is Gristle Valley. Which is actually an ogre settlement. Though I'm not sure it actually... I mean, it says it starts as ruin. Um, I don't think any ogres start nearby because uh, Scrag is down here now. Uh, which is interesting that he's down in a region famed for mercenaries. Which is nice to have some ogres there. So it feels slightly appropriate. Um, even if there are no dogs of war. At least, at least there are ogres. So I think that's everything. Let's move on. Okay. So. Hans Frankenfurter is currently hiding out in Isleheart. Hopefully he'll continue to do that. Hopefully he'll continue to do that. That's my hope, because I want to be able to get Uberstrike and then get Helmgard. Um, if he sits in Helmgard, it's going to be a really tough fight to deal with the garrison and the garrison army. But we'll see. Oh, also for new things. Boop. New Warriors of Chaos hanging out in Brass Keep. So this is the Fecundites um, of uh, Festus. So they will be attacking all of the regions around here. We'll probably have to come up here and help liberate a bunch of settlements um, that he destroys. So we will be at odds with him. Uh, also, the Black Pit now. Uh, it's the Black Pit tribe, specifically. It used to just be like a leftover orc faction they just sort of stuffed in there. So now it's specifically the Black Pit tribe. Um, and uh, we I can't see any evidence of him currently, but Kazrak starts up here as well. He's often quite active. So, Certainly seems a lot more active than Morga ever was when Morga started up here, so... But anyway, we'll probably see some Kazrak at some point. Uh, I'm going to get two more free company militia, then that'll be my limit. After that, I think it's uh, Swordsman to help fill out the roster with something a little bit more reliable. But anyway, let's move on. Roads to Renown, huh? This is very upsetting that we <laughs> we can't get Imperial Authority early out of this. That'd be really useful. So when your Imperial Authority is up, um, it's, you know, plus one or anything else, right? It doesn't matter how much it is, but as long as it's in the positive, um, you get a chance to raise the fealty of any of the provinces, which is represented. You can see that on Kaderberg. There's the three, 
So that's a uh, faction-wide thing. It's not Karaberg, but it's the faction that Karaberg, you know, uh, is owned by. So that same three will be on all of uh, Middenland's settlements. But that will go up. And once that gets to ten, we get the chance to confederate with them, which I think is a brilliant way of doing it. I generally hate confederation. As anyone who's, you know, um, been on the channel before, you'll know. You've heard me rant about it a billion times. I, I really think it's a lazy system, because usually it's not backed up by a bunch of interesting story stuff like this. So I love how it's done here, because it, it makes sense for it to exist like that. So I love it. But anyway, uh, one of your top advisors has suggested a way to increase your political standing within the Empire. Though you do not command all military activities in faraway lands personally, it is possible to have each state's annals updated to attribute past military victories to your own involvement and frame yourself as an inspirational military leader. To achieve this, you must contact your most trusted officials in each state and pull a lot of clandestine political strings. No small feat, but the fruits of such labour can be highly beneficial to you in the long run. So I love these events. They always really do a lot to highlight just how much of a mess the Empire is. Um, it is it is very authoritarian. It's a it's a crappy place, <laughs> but it's the best we've got against you know it's a bulwark against chaos. So we'll we'll try and make the best of it. We are not going to do that. We'll get us more prestige because you know we're an honourable sort. So we're gonna we're not going to do that. Terrible cost. idea. So let's take Cooper's Reich. Hans Frankenfurter sadly has moved back to Helmgart, which is what I was afraid of. That is going to be a grueling fight. Uh, this one isn't going to be a grueling fight. I don't think we need to fight this one. I will allow Auto Resolve to do its thing. Alright, some damage, but nothing too, too bad. And of course, we're going to occupy. I could loot and occupy just so I can get extra unit replenishment. Uh, I'm going to do that. We've got a bit of money. It'll just expedite things a bit. Is it time? Sure is. And this is interesting. Usually it's not a weaving house. Usually um, Uber Strike builds a training field. So that's interesting. Uh, sort of Strife. The Sword of Strife never has an owner for long. For those who wield it, always find it in their hand when their temper rises. Oh dear. And we've got a war horse, which is something that just happens now, which is amazing. The Emperor will not meet every fight on Deathclaw. Sometimes a more subtle approach is needed, so he travels on a barded steed. Deathclaw being his, uh, his, his beautiful griffin. His, his lovely pet griffin. So what's really nice now is that mounts you just get, act, you know, they just unlock immediately. You don't have to spend skill points on it, which is a really nice design change. It, it just means that you aren't on foot until you get your best option, because people hate spending skill points that they're not going to be able to make use of at the end. You know, at the end of the game, it'll be a wasted skill point, but also it means that you're not running around on foot in battle for the first you know, 50 turns of every campaign, so it's it's very annoying. It's nice just for them to give it to us, so we don't have to don't have to do those you know ridiculous calculations. Okay, now let's get a couple of swordsmen. So what I'll probably end up doing is attacking Eilhard first, so I can either have Ubersreich be taken by Hans Frankenverter, and then he's on his own. I can take him, or he'll just turtle, and I'll have additional time to recruit. And if I have additional time to recruit, it's going to do me a lot more good than it's going to do him, you know. I can make more use of a couple more units than he can make use of a couple more units. So, until I have a full army, any time I spend recruiting is going to benefit us greatly. Uh, and that's that. No, it isn't. Let's do diplomacy, because right. now that we have more territory... No, nope, no one else wants to trade. Fair yes. enough. But a lot of people Empire, want to not bicker, the the and that's fine by me. If they're willing to pay for peace, I will let them. Yes. Oh, I love there's a balance button. That's also a big change, a big, 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 big change for Warhammer 2. Just being able to click balance and instead of having to offer them 50 different deals at incrementally smaller amounts until they say yes, is ugh. That was so tedious. Uh, do so, I want to get anything else? Yes, Midland. Let's get country. military access in case I need to traipse across his territory to liberate any yeah, cities. Might even be his cities that I'm liberating, you know? It's, um... Yeah, yeah not something I want to do. Don't want to annoy him while trying to help him. That would be... Irritating. Okay... Uh, do I attack Helmgard now? I know I was just saying I, I wasn't gonna, but now I'm gonna go Eilhart first. 
Uh, Uber's Reich is fine where it is. I'm going to upgrade Grunberg while I'm waiting for Carl to get into position. And here he is. Uh, this, we... Wow, we do need to fight this. Really? Really, game? This is how you're going to... This is how you're going to treat me. Another big change from Warhammer 2. Although, not the end of Warhammer 2. They did actually add the auto-resolve thing. But uh, certainly, last time I played a Carl Franz campaign on the channel, we didn't have the uh, auto-resolve preview. I would have hit auto-resolve on this for sure. So yeah, nice nice little quality of life change there. But we do have to fight this, unfortunately, because I am not losing a unit of help it is to that. Okay, here we are. I guess we're attacking from the same position again. Except this time we've got three company militia that are going to push this way. Shooting all the way. Also, I guess I need to have you at a slightly better angle than last time, right? No trees in your way? Okay, that tree might be in the way. I assume those branches aren't going to get in the way. Uh, and that might be a correct assumption. I really have no idea. Uh, no, not you, silly. And I guess you two can follow this way. Uh, our knights, I'm just going to leave. And all of the injured folk can just hang out at the back. That way I can spread out the damage because replenishment is on a per unit basis, not per army. So if everybody's injured, then they all get the same amount of healing. So you get more healing overall. It's very handy. Alright. Alright, Sigmar's heirs. Show me how it's done. And a free company militia. I'm just knocking over fences. Okay, the other one getting picked off. A little scary, but they're gonna start shooting soon. Nice. I just love that. Being able to get the shots in on the charge is really satisfying. So we're going to keep moving in. Oh yeah, of course we're on, we're on horseback now. Like, I was thinking, how did you get there so quickly? Oh right, yeah, because... Horses are first. Uh, okay, now we're going to attack. Okay, just, 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 just come on. Finish them off, yeah? Come on, why don't you open up with a volley? Yeah, like that. Perfect. Get through him soon enough. And let's see. Yeah, let's try and bring in our cavalry. Doing some damage in here. Still not done, huh? Now they're done. Good. Okay, let's move you in. Everybody move. Come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Need to get rid of these swordsmen. You must. You must. Alright, cavalry's on the way. Now, let's use the Reichland Rune Fang so these guys can get work done. We do have great swordsmen in here, so they should be doing some good work. I mean, one kill so far, which obviously isn't great. But <laughs> it'll soon add up. Okay, how's things looking over here? I mean, fine, I guess. There is a platform in the way. Which I'm not best pleased about, but it'll have to do. Alright, how are you lot doing? You doing well? Doing well, boys. Okay, let's get rid of that blockade. That's actually going to last a long time, isn't it? Probably. Okay, just start attacking it. Really? Crossbowman's still going, huh? Surprising. And more mortar fire coming in. Certainly giving them a bit of a fright. I'll try and aim for those spear, but I don't think I'm going to hit them, though. Alright, guys. When are you ready? I feel like these towers are doing quite a lot of damage to these guys. I could have destroyed them, but I thought we'd have this by now. I mean, I'm not currently stood in it, so that's obviously not helping. But still, it's not the point. 
I'm not sure what the point is, honestly, but it's probably something. Okay, good. Got our right guard charging in. I love they shout, die traitor, because they know they're fighting other empire. It's very cool. Uh, not a new feature, but it's a, it's a good feature. There we go, that's a win. Decisive victory. Okay, very nicely done. So we can take it over. As is tradition. Well, yes, it is your kingdom, Carl. Okay, so at some point we will also be uh, taking Marienburg back. Because Marienburg and the Westerland, as it was once known, now the Wasteland, partly because it seceded from the Empire, <laughs> but uh, also because it's basically a wasteland. It's all swamp and, uh, yeah, it's not the best. But Marienburg, huge trading port, so you don't need a lot of uh, fertile and, you know, useful land or natural resources if you're at the mouth of a river. It just, it helps, helps a lot. Um, but anyway, we'll try and take this. But what's really interesting is that the uh, actual city building, you know, the settlement building for Marienburg, no longer gives a bunch of income bonuses to nearby settlements or anything, to nearby provinces or any of that nonsense. It's just a, a typically quite good settlement. You know, it's got a good harbour. That's unique, but, you know, it's not unique stuff the whole way down. It used to be that taking Marienburg was just such a huge advantage that it felt like the whole campaign was balanced around taking it. Now you have to make do, you know? Now you might even decide to be allied with Marienburg instead. I mean, I'm still probably going to take it, because I want my empire united, but still, it's, um, yeah, it's interesting. Because it was a bit much, that. It was a bit much. So, let's have a look. Yep, let's get, um, actually, let's go root marcher, just to make sure that I can get back to, uh, to Helmgard when I want to. So let's go with a couple more swordsmen. And that should do it. We'll go we'll go fight them next turn. Should be fun. So what can I build? Plenty of things as it turns out. Let's take, get a clay pit. That gives a bit more income and also more trade resources. Um, I also might start upgrading the rally field seeing as I don't have a rally field elsewhere. And I kind of want the extra growth and the extra money is quite nice too. So I think I'll hold off on building another barracks for now. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna build another one of those. But I also want to make sure I have a stables. I think a couple of pistoliers would be really nice early on. It's it's such a huge amount of utility just having a couple of quick um, units like pistoliers that can harass enemies and chase down fleeing units and and even just uh, sort of cycle charge the rear of the enemy. You know when they're engaged in the front line because. They're actually much better than a lot of heavy cavalry at rear charging, as bizarre as it sounds, because they shoot. And shooting, being being the sort of the target of ranged attacks, is bad for leadership. And then being charged in the rear is bad for leadership. So if the intent is just to break the enemy rather than killing them with the charge, you're going to do it much better with with pistoliers than than a lot of uh, decent heavy cavalry. Just yeah, because you got that you got that ranged attack as well. So it's very handy early on in the game where you're fighting mostly low tier units that break easily. You don't need to kill them, you just need to make them run. And yeah, might as well get the rally field going as well. Commandment is available, we're going to go with the Council of Burgermeisters for the extra growth and income from trade. Lovely. Okay, another turn. So they're recruiting, I mean they've got quite a big force there. I'm changing my mind. I think I want to spend one more time recruiting. Let's go. One more time. One more turn recruiting. Uh, also, let's get Isleheart all grown up. Lovely. And I just rather spent all my money, haven't I? <laughs> Don't quite have enough. Okay, fine. Let's not do that. Although, I might. Ah, Artois. Artois want to give me 400 quid. That is a stellar proposal. Okay, good. Um, oh yeah, so, uh, also, as I was saying about um, Pistoliers, uh, about them being a good uh, sort of early game addition, they're also really good thematically, because they tend to be the sons of noblemen who uh, are sort of pursuing a military career, right? It's, it's a really good way for them to get prestige, to... to 
be in the military. But also, uh, they're rich enough to own horses and they don't want to be in the front line, you know, in the ditches with swordsmen toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe fighting enemies. So they tend to be scouts and things like that. Um, and, you know, they own pistols. That is very much their own equipment, uh, pistoliers. So I kind of like the idea of starting with them. And then later on, when we do need units that just kill stuff on the charge rather than frightening people away, we can upgrade them, you know? We'll, we'll replace them for Knights of the Blazing Sun or more Bright's Guard or something. And I think that'd be a really nice, um, you know, just a nice little through line for, for those characters. I think it'd be nice. So, let's get a couple of swordsmen. And let's upgrade Isleheart. Good. Moving on. Okay, technology researched. Tithe rebates. Oh, and hello, Leonard. Hi. I didn't see you there. Uh, a rebate is a useful tool when things are good to ensure compliance during the hard times, inevitably just around the corner. Alright, so, um... Good. Keep commanding. Uh... I mean, this is about as good as we're gonna get, right? I'd say so. Uh, so I think we need to go attack them now. I refuse. I think we need to go attack them. Although, how's Uberstrike looking? So Uberstrike has a pretty tiny garrison. I'm thinking what we might be able to do is stand here and do a tasty little ambush. I mean, there'll be a couple more units in here, so I think they'll probably try and go for Uberstrike, provided they don't spot us. It is, uh, it is hard to say. Also, because they both are mustering. I don't know if one is queuing. After the other, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, um, I don't want to run straight into Helmgard. These fort battles are a lot more difficult than they used to be, because they actually have towers now. You know, the towers like in siege battles. You know, the Warhammer Three ones. Yeah, those exist in fort battles now, and they were already really, really well defended areas. So uh, it's a bit of a nightmare. Uh, let's get I mean, extra speed for infantry would be really good, and extra armor. Yeah, I'm going to start upgrading my infantry. Because this is going to be useful across the board. The beautiful thing with technologies, um, as opposed to, like, skill points, is that they affect your whole kingdom. So if I get attacked, my garrison will have extra armor. And that's really useful. Hello, Count Ludenhoff. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, well, Uberstrike just declared heresy. And uh, that got us a witch hunter. Brilliant. So one thing you guys might notice as well, um, you know, people who have uh, played this campaign in previous games, there used to be a, a quest battle here that you'd get almost immediately. The battle for Blood Pine Woods, I want to say. Um, that always gets you a wizard. There's no wizard now. There's no quick way to get a wizard. It's really quite painful. Also, how, how are you still going? Anyway, we're going to try and ambush some more. So the seeds of a heresy is suspected in one of our settlements. The Grand Theogenist has released a witch hunter and charged him to root out the chaos taint. Except instead he's just going to hide in a bush with uh, with the Emperor, which... He has the wrong kind of taint he's chasing. Let's go to the next turn. Hopefully these guys will show some gumption. So, Vlad is now the Lord of Sylvania. Uh, Manfred von Karstein is all the way down here somewhere. He's moved a lot, so Vlad is taking his place here. Which I kind of like um, in some regards, and others not quite so much. Like, I kind of like that you get to sort of see the, the vampire wars take place hundreds of years too late, of course, but it's, it's nice. You know, being elect to count and being emperor was always Vlad's thing more than Manny's. And they are attacking Uberstrike. How? Di you saw him, didn't you? You spotted him and you just walked around him. Fine, fine, you do that, you jerk. <laughs> no, he's just going to stand there. Well, at least we can take him out and move. So no, that's fine. It's a bit annoying, but it's fine. Okay, lots of ambushes foiled and such. That's fine. I mean, the fact that he saw the ambush coming and he still decided to run at me is ridiculous. Uh, why does that say five turns? That's not to repair, right? That's to build it? You know, I have no idea. Whatever the case. Let's attack this chump. No, come. Come here, chump. 
Also, we just met the Broken Axe, which is very bad news. So, um... Uh, Faction destroyed. Paravon. Here. Paravon got wiped out by the Skull Smashers. Which is very scary. Wait, not the Skulls. Broken Axe, rather. Skull Smashers are also destroyed. They got destroyed up here. Anyway. That's bad news. Grom the Paunch is on his way. I really need to take Helm Guard before he shows up. He is going to try and fight us. Anyway. Hi, buddy. Uh, so I could fight this myself. Or I could auto resolve it. I feel like I do need to fight this myself so I have lower casualties so I can go take Helm Guard this turn. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We're going to fight him. I've decided. We're fighting him. Ooh, very misty. Right, so I'm going to move you up that way. You can move in there. Um, and yeah, that'll do, honestly. Just everyone, everyone go nuts. So we will have some opening volleys hit us, I think. So I'm going to make sure that I get Carl Brands in there first. And we're going to try and ignore these spearmen so we can go for the archers. Which seems to be working perfectly. Okay, keep... Keep pushing in. Okay, perfect. Next, please. Yeah, this is perfect. Mostly. Yes, my lord. Yep. Keep chasing those archers. Quick match. We are Sigma's No, not you guys. What are you doing? Lunatics? Alright. In you go. In you go. <laughs> oh, nice. Get them. Yeah, alright, he's got it doing well. Okay, let's keep moving. Still got mortars shooting at things. Uh, we'll just cancel his order, honestly. Okay, go handle them now. Okay. Into the next lot, please. Yeah, it looks like we're doing quite well. Um, it's just the one unit swordsman seems to have taken a lot of damage. Alright, how are the right guard doing? Alright, 120 kills, nice. Alright, let's bring you back up this way. Yeah, all these guys are shattering pretty quick. Yeah, come on, Rice Guard. Okay. Uh, you, specifically. Yeah, go get him. Nice. Yeah, this guy was doing a heresy. Quick, get him. You missed. <laughs> that was, uh, that was him jumping to conclusions, which is something that, that witch hunters are famous for doing. In all the literature. Decisive victory. Marvellous. Uh, so if we take on captives, we will be, uh, yeah, fit as a fiddle. Perfect. Yes. Do you not and we can't reach the fort. Of course we can't. But we got wound recovery time down. That almost makes no difference whatsoever. Got an entertainer. Some do it for the roar of the crowd, and others for the money. And a burger. The glue that holds urban society together. Right, let's get some level ups. Uh, let's get Emperor's Finest maxed out. And Ricard van Hasselt. Uh, let's give him the Sword of Strife. So he's a better sword. It means his, does his model look a little bit funny? Just slightly. Here, have some various things. Ooh, Ambush Success Chance I could put up. That's useful. That would have been handy previously. Uh, and let's get him... Yeah, Bloody Blade. We don't really need things like Cleanse Corruption or anything yet. The Empire. And i got nothing to recruit. Nothing to do. Just gotta, just gotta wait. And attack that guy in a minute. 
So, building upgrades available in Grunberg. Let's also... Okay, I guess I won't bother getting a guardhouse. I didn't want a guardhouse anyway. I remain unconvinced. Hello, Viltrum. Uh, military access. Yeah, why not? Okay, so, uh, you may have noticed Kazrak over here. Hello. Hi there, that's not good news. He is very close. He's going to attack Isleheart next turn, isn't he? He can't reach it. He can reach it. Jeez. Oh, I need to take this, so... I'll deal with Isleheart in a minute. I'm just very disappointed that ambush didn't work. If that ambush had worked, then we would have wiped out that army, taken that the next turn, and then we could have gone to Isleheart this turn, and everything would have gone to plan. It would have been, like, the minimum amount of casualties at each step, but nope, nope, that guy had to be a jerk and attack us. Um, and it was a suicide mission for him. That's what makes it so irritating. Like, if he had any concept of self-preservation, he would have seen Carl had stayed in his fort, but nope. Nope, he just had to try and burn down Uberstrike. What a jerk. Uh, so, yeah, this should be okay. I mean, the crossbowmen are actually the biggest uh, threat here, and the archers, because they are going to be able to just sit tight behind those walls and get some pretty big damage into us as we're approaching, but we should be able to manage it. All right, so... What's all this, then? <laughs> hey, guys. Very busy. Very busy trying to pry you guys apart. Okay, let's just move you back, all right? Good lads. Um, and you two are probably going to send up that way. Yeah, I think I think we're just going to charge this one side. And I want to have them stay back for a hot minute. Yeah, I'll let you shoot whatever you like. Right, you can go over that way too. Yeah, you know, just let all of our... Ooh, I was going to say all of our shielded folk. Great swords aren't shielded. They are armoured though, which certainly helps. And it looks like we've startled away most of them. This is quite a juicy target over here. So yeah, if we attack here next, that should help. Uh, some swordsmen there. It would be nice to get into these supply locations, which are new, by the way. You may have noticed these supply locations exist. They've been, they've modernised it all. Uh, there's a bunch of little tower locations you can see. That's a tower location. There's one there, one there, one there, one there. Uh, more on the edge somewhere? Where is it? Is that one? No, I don't think that's it. Anyway, there's a bunch. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, this is another tower location. There's loads. They're all over the shop. Uh, nine kills so far. It's not great. It's not great. It's not terrible. Well. Oh, we're getting some hits. We're getting some hits in there. Alright, let's start moving the free company up. This might not be the way to go, but... We'll see. I'll move these guys up too. Although, mm, nah, they're just going to get shot, aren't they? Very shot. Alright, start climbing down. How are we doing at the gates? Almost through. Almost through. Did they just... Oh, they just built that. Sound like that got destroyed. It's the sound effect of that being destroyed, I think. Okay. Do I just want you to stand up there? Maybe. Alright, they're all moving in. Uh, 47 kills so far with the mortars. And we're getting some good damage into this bunch. There's a lot here to target. And we have great swordsmen over here. Still quite high numbers. Uh, the halberdiers here, a little bit frightening. They do have good armor piercing. Always got through these spearmen. Which is great news for us. Alright. This is going well. This is going well. I want to get up here. 
Okay, good. Okay, they're running away now. Let's just go for... Yeah, let's go for those spearmen. Hitting this whole clump would be incredible. Oh, I need to get through these halberdiers, guys. You really do. Oops. Okay, you start going for those crossbowmen. Okay, good. Let's charge in this way. You handle those swordsmen, please. <laughs> God, this trail. Oh, and you can climb down too. Uh, 117 kills for the mortars. Yeah, these guys are not faring well here. I really want to see... Ah, here we go. Here comes a volley. Let's see how they fare against this. Very good hits. Very good hits. Marvellous. Okay, please, please get through these halberdiers. Come on, guys. Okay, let's have them move up. Okay, let's move you up this way. You up there. More archers are shooting somehow. 160 kills on the mortars. Yeah, those mortars really are the MVPs here. And also their crossbowmen. I don't like those crossbowmen. Alright, let's start shooting that way. I know we've almost got 200 kills shooting into this clump, but this clump... They're doing more damage with the archers than the surviving infantry there, so... Oh, also, there's uh, Leonard Helborg over there. Okay, where... Yeah, I knew it. I bloody knew it. The other free company, instead of going through this wall, decided to climb up that ladder. Because of course they did. Of course they bloody well did. Alright, let's get these guys up here too. I want to take this over so these two towers break. There's still two more behind, but it's a start. It's a start. Also, come on guys, just push past Leonard, okay? I know he's a Hellborg. That's not the point. So, uh, uh, Kurt Helborg is the Reichsmarschall. So, that could be, that could be their, um, their cavalry dad's brother. That could be their cavalry uncle. And yes, I am using the correct terminology. <laughs> is that not obvious? How have you been doing? 39 kills for Richard van Hasselt over there. That's great. And you guys still somehow fighting halberdiers. So that 48 melee defense is keeping them going for weeks. It's quite impressive, to be honest. Alright, now let's get you guys up here. Yeah, this is looking great. I think it's just that one rear charge from the swordsman. Oh, and you guys shooting. Yeah, that helps too. That certainly helps. Okay, how are things looking over here? Oh, my word. Hi. Hi there. Lip. Okay. Free company. Oh, now you, now you're on your way. All right, let's get over here. Uh, you, you need to help with these Empire Knights, mate. Run! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Yeah, did not spot those Empire Knights. Yeah, you're doing okay. Uh, right, let's get you guys to actually charge the back of these halberdiers. And I'm going to attack those Empire Knights with my mortars from now on. That's my plan. And we've almost... Yep, we've taken it. Perfect. Oh, I think he's been shooting. Yeah, he has. Ooh, ooh yeah, get out of there. Get the heck out of there. Yeah, keep pushing through him. Got more towers. Okay, what are you doing? Oh, you're still trailing, that's why. Alright, free company. Move up. Okay, how's someone charging the back of them yet? Okay, good. We're almost through them. Ooh, nice. Yeah, go pester them. Why the heck not? Yeah, you can help deal with him too. 
God, how Reichsguard are in trouble. There's only 17 of them left. You know, I'm just going to start picking random targets and telling them to attack. Okay, how are you not charging to the back of these guys yet? Our great sword's been busy fighting the... Oh, army losses. They've been busy fighting the hardest to kill units. Things with the most melee defense the whole time. <laughs> That's very silly. Pyrrhic victory. Well, we always knew it was going to be Pyrrhic, but it's a victory, and that's what matters. Alright, well, everyone survived, and that's the main thing. And yep, we're going to take it over. Oh, it's only on tier 1. Ugh, it's not good. Empire Sash is gone, though, which is good. Uh, it looks like Montfort might be able to hold Grom at bay a little bit. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, a little bit scared about that. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Um, what else do we want? Honest steel? Some of my great swords? Can I get some improvements? Pistol corpse? I mean, to be fair, with pistol corp, we're going to get uh, bonuses whenever, you know, in this campaign. That's going to help a lot. Um, and it helps a lot of the cheap stuff we have now. So I think having the free company militia perform better is, is lovely for as long as we keep them. But yeah, the handgunner is getting extra damage. It's going to be really vital later on when we're having to take down big, big armored targets. So, Ricard van Hasselt. Let's get accusation. Because that lowers missile resist, physical resist, melee defense, and armor. If we were able to use that on the um, uh, halberdiers that the great swords are fighting, they would have been just carved apart like butter. That would have been jolly handy. Okay, so Grunberg, let's go ahead and get you that guard house. Uh, Isleheart, I'd love to build one in Isleheart as well, but I think you might lose it before it even starts building. So, might be a bit wasteful. Yeah. It's a shame, but we're going to have to leave it. Oh, and of course we can get the Council of Burgermeisters here as well, so more income from trade and some more growth to help Helmgard get, get back on its feet. Grr, it's going to take ages. It's going to take ages to build that up. And <laughs> we really need it built up. With those green skins coming knocking. A quest has been issued, mighty lord. A great adventure beckons. Be wary, though. For while the potential rewards are great, so too are the perils. Guys, he said the thing. He said the thing. He said the thing from the Vortex campaign. Be wary, though. It's basically his catchphrase. Wonderful. Anyway, we have a quest battle. So, Theodoric Gauser, elected Count of Nordland, requests aid. His lands have been experiencing increased coastal raids from Norska, and he needs allies to help repel the attackers, fearing they are forerunners of something far more sinister. His fears are realized when a massive Norskan force is spotted en route to Nordland's shores. The Emperor must now show that his reign is one of military strength, that none should doubt his power. He must drive the Norskan army back into the Sea of Claws. So that gets us Beast Slayer. I know it's called the Reichland Rune Fang, but that's like a legacy thing. It used to be the Reichland Rune Fang until they started divvying out all of the Rune Fangs to everybody. The Rune Fangs being the, the swords built specifically. Oh, it actually says on the description of this this sword, which is handy. One of the 12 magical swords belonging to the Empire's elect accounts. Beast Slayer has taken down many of the hideous monsters infesting the dark, dense Drakvold forest. So yeah, the dwarfs built those. For, uh, for Sigmar, but Sigmar was long dead before the dwarves got around to actually finishing them, because it turns out that dwarves live a lot longer and spend a lot more time crafting things than um, humans live for, so anyway, they still gifted them to the Empire afterwards, and you know, and each elect account got one, which is rather nice. So, Fort Sol, interesting. This is cool. So Fort Sol is obviously another fort map, and uh, it's owned by the Golden Order. So Soland was a province that got destroyed. Um, a war completely wiped out the province. But they've decided to sort of make it exist again <laughs> in this game for the sake of having uh, Balthazar Gelt have a have a place to rule on his own without having to, you know, having to sort of knock any elector count out of their throne, which I think is fun. I think it's rather nice. Although, 4th uh, edition Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay has actually brought back the province. It actually sort of exists again, and they've got, yeah, they're writing around that. Um, they've sort of changed the dynamic a bit, how the uh, sort of the empire exists, which I think is really cool. It's made each region very, 
very unique. It's, it's nice. I like it. So anyway, uh, we have some things to do. So the Golden Order has come under attack from Norska in the region of Fort Sol and are appealing to you for military assistance. Will you come to their defense and join them in battle or leave them to fight off their attackers alone? Yes, uh, we are going to spend some money on it, sadly. I don't want to spend prestige because prestige is usually, uh, usually quite useful for getting, um, getting more uh, imperial authority, which is going to be useful. So we want to make sure we don't spend this frivolously. Money, though, we get that back every turn, so who cares? So Leif Nyland is attacking. So this is going to be really interesting because we're going to get a uh, uh, bodice dog burglar here. These guys are going to show up. And what's really weird is that I'm not sure if this system is exactly how they wanted it to behave. Um, but this differs in Warhammer 3 to how it did in Warhammer 2 in ways that you'll see. But I haven't done a fort battle uh, with one of these in a long, long time. So we'll see how it looks. So a couple of things have changed in Warhammer 3. So in Warhammer 3, reinforcements don't appear straight away. So it means it'll be two minutes before we can even start deploying, which actually makes our reinforcements kind of rubbish. Um, I hope they cancel it for this event, um, but I'm not sure they can. But I, that is feedback I, I am submitting, because it's a bit weird to have these really interesting sort of intervention fights where you send people to come help, and then they just don't really help by the time the battle's already dealt with, because just moving from the back of the map to the front takes ages anyway. But I have to wait two minutes before you can do it. It's um, it's a bit much. But also, there's all of the building slots, right? There's all the building stuff in these. And it actually gives control of all the building stuff to the player when you are in allied territory, which is interesting. So we won't be able to move these guys in, but we can execute the building of some towers, I guess. So it's a little bit peculiar. But it actually makes these, uh, these sort of support fights so much more difficult that you have to wait for the reinforcements to actually show up. So hopefully that'll get addressed, because uh, it also means that you aren't doing anything for two minutes, which is a bit boring, you know? It's You kind of want to get involved, but no, not allowed. But that's okay. So Norska are moving up. Also, hang on a minute, this is Fort Sol. This is in the south of the Empire. What on earth are Norska doing there? You know what this is? Yep. Yeah, look, look, look. They're doing a Hannibal. They've crossed the Alps, and by Alps I mean the Grey Mountains, and <laughs> now they're coming to get us. That's exactly what they've done. Norska has gone and done a Hannibal. Cheeky sods. You know, it's sort of backwards though, but still. All right, let's go ahead and build a tower. I'm going to build the ones at the back the most. They're better to reach the front, but... If this gets taken, we lose the front too, and by the looks of it, our allies aren't defending this very well. So I'll try and make sure the back is secured. I mean, it can still shoot into this area, so... Still useful. Okay. 30 more seconds. And, god, we're not even getting any cavalry, it's just... It's pretty weak. Pretty weak. Don't know how we're going to stop that mammoth, although the tower seems to be doing a great job. Whittling down that mammoth. These trolls are a problem. Usually when I see trolls attacking, because trolls are pretty good on the charge and they hit pretty hard, but if you just have spearmen on the other side, you can just open the gates and start stabbing at them and it really slows them down. Okay, how's everyone else doing? Uh, they're halberdiers. They're not holding out as well as the previous guys were. Very cheeky. Alright, you know what? Let's climb up to here. Come on. And the guns. Come on, everybody. I'm going to put the guns up here. It's going to be cool. I don't know if they have the best line of sight from up here, but it just it feels right. <laughs> it feels right, guys. It feels right. Okay. Hopefully this will go to plan. So we do actually have more uh, more money for towers. We have a sheer, sheer numbers of them. I'm actually going to do these as well now that it looks like this isn't going to get taken. I mean, we have a little bit longer time to assess. But this is good. Marauder Hunter's getting whittled down nice and quickly. 
Oh, no, Spearman, you got to stay here, mate. Like, there's a bunch of trolls. Although I guess this isn't looking great either, is it? Go on, Halberdiers, go get them. Go on, go on, buddy. You can do it. Yeah, there we go, they're thinking about it. They're thinking about it. These guys still holding out, that's all they need to do. That's all they need to do, they just need to hold out. And... Okay, they have broken through the gates. They have broken through the gates. A little bit worried about the mammoth. But, we got hand gunners, I'm sure it'll be fine. And that mammoth is half dead now, which is great. Looks like our boys are holding out, though I'm not quite sure why these crossbowmen are still insistent on hiding in that little corner. It's not ideal. Okay, now I'm thinking that going up here was a mistake, because nothing seems to actually be coming for us. <laughs> yeah, they're never able to reach a thing, are they? Probably will eventually, but only after half of our army is dead. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Huh. Oh, we'll keep building towers. Take too long for them to walk around now. Okay, let's get another tower built. And we're in position. We're in position now. It's looking pretty good. And yeah, we got some good range there. I hope these guys do come for us. There's a Empire Knight chilling over there. Okay, it looks like this is a mess. <laughs> Alright, let's head this way. Uh, Spearman. I'm just going to line up there. I guess we'll build another tower over here in a minute. Maybe even over there. Just fill fill the map with towers. That's what makes it so deadly, guys. So many towers. Okay. Good. We'll try and pin down these marauders. Although, is that wise? Maybe we shouldn't bother. We need to get these archers out there. And, ooh, okay, this is looking a bit... Ooh, I say a bit. Very iffy, actually. Very iffy. Let's pull you back. Now, they're still chasing. So, I'm actually going to move over here, and I might be able to get some shots into them. Yeah. We'll figure something out. Yeah, a couple of volleys into that guy, and we'll be laughing. Probably. And yeah, they're broken. That's okay. Move up here, try and keep the archers safe. Okay, I'm just going to move there for now. And let's get that other tower built. And, oh god. It's not rampaged anymore. Oh, that's not good news. Okay, come on. Come on. Look, you got line of sight. You. Okay, it's rampaged again, but it's rampaged and coming towards us. Ooh. Come on, one more volley. One more volley. One more volley. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Guys, guys. Okay, that was quite good. But it's still going. <laughs> Alright, retreat. <laughs> retreat, guys, retreat. And, oh, and they're all running that way. Well, that's typical, isn't it? Oh, that's good. Yeah, they're doing the job. Okay, let's build this as well. If we get to it, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, it looks like that guy just broke, which is good. Yeah, you need to kill this mammoth, guys. Can you shoot the mammoth? Everyone shoot the mammoth. We are, Sigma's heads. <laughs> we are being chased by mammoths. Hand gunners. Okay, keep For just keep running. No, keep gunners. running, guys. What are you doing? 
Jesus Christ. Well, this is going well. And we're actually in a position where we can start just like saving some money to upgrade towers. Oh no, there's one more tower we can build. Which I will definitely do. Come on, come on, come on. One volley. I had surprisingly little damage. Oh, it, it, he seems preoccupied. No, no, don't, 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 don't. Let him, let, let him die. Just let him. No, no, no. Oh, God. <laughs> Run away. What are you doing? What are you doing, you lunatics? All right, look, we've almost got him. We've almost got him. Uh, really? He slipped past. Oh, different unit. Different unit of trolls. Fair enough. And you're doing okay back there. Uh, they're running away. Come on, how? How are you still going? Come on. Come on, you cheeky sod. I don't, I'm not sure if Sigma is preserving anyone. Which is which is the problem here. And uh, what are you guys doing? Look at all those swordsmen, spearmen. Oh, well, we won thanks to army losses. Thank God for that. Thank God for that, because these guys were no good. But, uh, hey, that was fun. I do, I do love these little, little battles, because it, this isn't my territory, you know? This isn't my fort, but I'm still fighting because it's part of the Empire. It makes you feel involved. It makes you feel like you're really trying to keep the Empire together as Emperor. It's, it's a wonderful mechanic. Absolutely adore it. One of the best mechanics in the game, I think. Close victory. And what's rather lovely is it cost us, uh, ooh, how much are we getting here? Not that much. So, it costs us two grand to come and help, which, obviously, the Golden Order are, are grateful for us doing that. But we can get a rebate. We can get a rebate. We can get a thousand back, basically. So, as long as you win, as long as you win, you can get some of your money back. No army travels alone. Who else would cook so, uh, so, so or loot the freshly slain? I don't know. Who, who would? Uh, you sure do, buddy. Also, we lucked out. Um, Gorsal ended up being the target of Kazrak, which is pretty good because that actually kind of weakens um, uh, Emil von Corden here. And I want Marienburg. I also want to do that quest battle, but I probably won't rush to do that just yet. Because, um, yeah, coming down here, I could take Fort Bergbrez nice and quickly. I could also start leveling up some of this other nonsense. Although... Oh, we need 4,000. We need that in a hurry. Alright, I'm upgrading Old Dwarf first. I'd be mad not to. We also need to upgrade that in a minute. Two more turns and we can upgrade that. Okay. So, we've got things to do. Um, sell an upgrade available. No. Not going to do anything. Mordheim. Interesting. Ostermark demands a regent. Mordheim has been taken. Uh, so this is also really great. It, it keeps the game from becoming homogenous, which is something that I actually find Confederation does a lot of, and I find that really annoying, especially when the AI do it. So this is a great way to make sure that each of the Empire provinces remain different provinces. It's really great. I absolutely adore it. So many great ideas and mechanics in this campaign. So, historically, the region of Mordheim has been ruled over by Ostermark, but is currently under the control of the elect account of another state. Wolfram Hertwig, the rightful elect account of Ostermark, has asked for your help in restoring his rule over this land immediately. Which, yes, we should, um, we should absolutely have it returned. What's really interesting, though, is Mordheim used to actually be Ostermark's capital city, but then it got blown up by a Warpstorm meteorite, which, um isn't ideal. Disciplinarian. Good order should be at the heart of any regime. And state troop standards. The extra speed is very, very useful. It's having slightly faster units. It makes an awfully big difference, because that can be the difference between not being able to catch up to something or being able to catch up to something. So it's a big deal. So as regiments gain renown, their standards become talismans that are just as important as their sword arms. And we also have a, a mission, do we? Interesting. Um, in battle, eliminate a lord belonging to any of the following enemies of Hockland. So the Vacandites, they want us to uh, deal with Festus. And they'll really like it if we do. It kind of looks like they're going to get wiped out, though. So we may have to come up here and, and return them to their rightful place at some point. 
Hmm. Yeah, we're probably going to lose this. But anyway, our countrymen are in peril. They've requested that we defeat their enemy in battle. If we are victorious, they will have no choice but to bow before the throne. Cool beads. Uh, Ricard Van Hasselt. Let's get you elusive. I want... Ooh, actually, maybe... Maybe just give him more missile strength. And just try and keep him out of a fight. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. What? Okay, so we have a few options here. I can run straight to Marienburg and take it over. Or I could take out uh, Emil von Corden while he's there. Or I can wait a turn and see if Kazrak jumps him. And then take out whoever whoever survives, I guess? Um, so we have one more turn. It's going to cost four grand, right? Oh, only two thousand. In that case, let's start developing that spot. Um... So yeah, there's a lot of opportunity here. There's a lot of opportunity. Hmm. Yeah, we got some things to think about. Definitely got some things to think about. So what we'll probably do is wait a turn, see where Emil ends up. He can't guard both Marienburg and Fort Burgres, so whichever one isn't defended will destroy in the next... Um, well, not destroy, we'll take it over uh, in the next turn. So I think that'll be good. Also, yeah, the Fekandites, they're on their way. We'll probably end up having to bail out Middenland um, from that fight, but I don't think we can do anything about Hockland. I, I don't think there's a way we can save him, honestly. But it would be nice to come up here at some point. There's also the quest battle to look forward to. So there's plenty to do. Plenty on the cards. And we're at turn 11. And for all we know, that's one-fifth of the way. To the uh, to the the world-ending event of some description, so we're we're getting there pretty quickly. So guys, this is where we're going to end the episode. So nice long first episode, and uh, it's going to be 45-minute episodes from here on out. And there's going to be a lot of them. I'm I'm trying to batch record just a billion of them and throw them out because for once uh, we have no time limits on this embargo. I can post as much content as I want. I don't have to drip feed you guys and and. Yeah, you don't have to wait for more embargoes to drop. I can just throw content at you, which I'm going to try and do, even though it's um, a million degrees still in my studio, and I'm currently uh, just dripping from from the heat. It's just a terrible time of year to have new content dropping. So anyway, I'll work my way through it, and you guys will get a lot of stuff to watch. Deal? Deal. All right, comment, like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.